Hello and welcome to Capitalism That Works, a series co-produced by Global Treehouse and myself, Jesper Kohl. And I'm very happy that you're joining us for this session because it's my favorite topic, Japan's demography and why I want to be reborn as a 23-year-old Japanese. Now, before you think that this is some guy with a midlife crisis, let's have a look at Japan's demographics and why Japan's demographics actually creates a great opportunity, almost a certainty, for the next generation of Japanese to actually enter a virtuous cycle of prosperity and a virtuous cycle of building a new middle class. Now, when you look at the demographics, that's the biggest pushback you always get when you're optimistic on Japan. The people who say, oh my God, how dare you be bullish on a country where in 300 years, only 11 people are going to be left. Now, quite frankly, who cares about what will happen in 300 years? For us, as business people, as investors, or just as people, what matters is the next five to 10 years. That's a reasonable forecast horizon. And over the next five to 10 years, Japan's demographic structure actually creates a rising participation rate, creates a labor market where the employee is going to become more and more powerful because it's the young Japanese that are increasingly in short supply. And look at the dynamics, how it's already unfolding. Every day over the last three years, the population of Japan shrank by about 1,200 people. But at the same time, every day, the number of people employed went up by about 3,000 people. And I ask you, what is more important, death or the fact that the number of people employed is actually increasing? We're seeing sharp increases in the participation rates of both female employment and male employment. And that's a good thing, and that's a structural thing that will continue to keep going. Now, when you look at the Japanese labor market, yes, you've got the positive demand and supply, a shortage of skill, a shortage of labor, that's good for wages, that's good for employment. But at the next level down, there's an even more powerful driver that is going on, which leads me to think that Japan is in a demographic sweet spot because it's not just the quantity of labor that is improving, but more importantly, the quality of the contracts jet labor gets. And here, we got to go back a little bit in history. You may recall 1995 was a year of big change in Japan. There was some disasters. We had the Kobe earthquake, there was the sarin gas attack by a domestic terrorist group, and there was the financial crisis of the mortgage lending associations. And as a result of that dramatic change in 1995, the Japanese ruling elite actually made some very, very fundamental changes. Most importantly, they changed the labor law. They allowed part-time employment, contract employment, in all industries, previously it was limited to very specific industries like agriculture. So 1995, Japan's labor reform was the death of lifetime employment, was the death of salaryman employment. And indeed, when you look at the data, since 1996, the only net jobs created were part-time employment not full-time employment. And as a result of that, we had a big social adjustment that some people refer to as the lost generation. Now, the good news is, looking ahead, exactly the opposite is now starting to happen. And mark my words, I believe Japan is the only advanced industrial economy where we are seeing 
and will see the rise of a new middle class. And that is driven by the scarcity of labor, the young generation is seeing is in scarce supply, and as a result of that, their wage bargaining, their contract bargaining is improving. And you're seeing it. This is no longer a forecast. This is reality. You see that leading companies like Toyota, like Hitachi, like Mizuho Bank are actually rehiring part-time and contract employees on a full-time basis because they know that structurally labor is going to be in increasingly short supply. So that's good news. And you do see that for the first time now in 20 years, since 2015, it is full-time employment that is actually starting to grow. Now, of course, there's still part-time jobs that are being filled, but the important thing is that for the first time in 20 years, for the first time in one generation, it is full-time jobs that are now being created by the leading companies. And it's important because creating full-time jobs does give you the basis for a new middle class. A full-time job gives you job security. It gives you higher pay, higher income, income stability. And very importantly, it also gives you access to leverage. Japanese banks, you know, are quite tough. If you don't have a full-time job, getting a credit card or getting a mortgage is practically impossible. So the more full-time employment you get, the greater the access to leverage gets. And as a result of that, you are seeing right now an increase in mortgage lending. You're seeing an increase in the transactions of condominiums and land here in Tokyo and elsewhere in Japan. And the driving force is exactly the fact that the generation in their 20s, the generation in their 30s, are now seeing improved quality of contract which is driven by the demographics of Japan. And you're seeing this also in the fact that wages and incomes are actually improving. And this is a very important point, particularly in comparison to the United States or to Europe. Because when the United States had its financial crisis, when Europe had its crisis, Yes, there were worries about consumer price deflation, but wage deflation never happened. In Japan, in contrast, throughout the 1990s, we did actually have wage deflation. And that is, of course, a terrible thing. Because, hey, if your wages actually fall by 1, 2, 3%, you're going to be more gloomy in your outlook. Now, the important thing is that that is what was in the past. Now, you find that wages are actually on the increase, that finally the quality of contracts is improving, that Japan is actually capable and on track to see what everybody wants, which is the rise of a new middle class. So, I think you now understand why it's great to be young in Japan. What about being old? Well, here, there's also very good news. The old in Japan are incredibly rich. And in fact, the Japanese baby boom generation is the richest baby boom generation on Earth. What is very interesting here is that the favorite statistics in Japan is actually 72%. Because what you find is that 72% of all Japanese over the age of 25 own the home that they live in, but have no debt. That's an incredibly asset-rich household sector. And yes, the baby boom generation had it very tough. They bought their homes during the bubble. Then they saw real estate prices collapse and they had to pay back their mortgages into negative equity. Of course, that depresses confidence, but they never got fired and they never got foreclosed. 
So here we are, 30 years after the peak of the bubble economy, those mortgages are paid off, those homes are still standing, and slowly but surely, real estate prices, apartment prices are actually going up. So you've got a fantastic situation in the overall system where the old are rich and where the young are getting opportunity due to the unique demographics that Japan has. Now, I think you understand why I think Japan is capitalism that works and why the demographics is actually a positive driver rather than a negative driver. Now, having said this, as a business person, you've got to adapt to the changing demographics. Because, for example, it's very clear that if the absolute number of people is falling, that some of the consumer durables are not going to be sold as frequently as they were before. I mean, just to give a very simple example, you know, once you get old, you no longer buy a new television every five or six years. You're stretching it out because you're worried that your assets are not going to drive so long. So you have to adapt as an entrepreneur, as a business person, to the reality of Japan's barbell demographics with the young generation seeing an increase in opportunity and purchasing power while the old generation is living off their assets and invariably is going to be more frugal. However, let's look at a concrete example. Sometimes people tell me, oh, Japan, it's the only country that sells more adult diapers than baby diapers, and isn't that a terrible thing? Well, no, it's not a terrible thing. If you're a diaper producer, that's a fantastic thing, because if you talk to Unicharm and some of the other diaper makers, you find that the profit margin on an adult diaper is twice as high as it is on a baby diaper, because, yes, when I wear an adult diaper, I will buy the highest quality product because I deserve it. Thank you very much for listening to the series Capitalism That Works, co-produced by Global Treehouse and myself, Jesper Cole. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it stimulated some thoughts. And I very much hope that we can see you and that you'll join us for some of the consequent sessions that are coming forward. Thank you very much.